we all can agree, as you said, Javi, very clearly, preventing churn before it starts is much more important than winning them, trying to win them back, right? Like an example, if they're out of the store, you're not gonna chasing after them down the block to try and get them back. Good luck no. with that. <laughs> Stalker, right? Um, right. right? It's, uh, this is the metrics I've seen, but the metrics may be different for certain brands, but 400% harder to win back a customer from churn um, than it is to prevent someone from churning. So focusing on identifying at-risk customers who are about to churn, so critical. I've seen that a lot of times the way to do this is you can identify, let's say you know your average you know, churn rates or the time or frequency of purchase. You identify maybe 30 days before that and you say 30 days before that window, if they hit that window, you tag them, you set up an automation that tags that customer says, these guys are at risk, they're about to churn. And this is where you can start doing the 30 day window, email, social, you know, um, you know, anything out there that can really just, you know, even SMS, you could just say like, we're going to make our offer to this guy. And then that 30 day window, we hope to win them back. Right. So great. And I'm going to also say, and this can sound a little counterintuitive, but sometimes preventing churn means you need to take a lighter touch, but you need to know where you need it. For example, if you have someone who used to open your bi you know, bi-weekly meaning twice a week, right? Your bi-weekly, because it could also mean every other week, your bi-weekly emails nonstop, and then they miss one, and then they miss one, and then they miss one, and then they miss one. And you know what? At that point, instead of doing the harder push and sending tons of emails, send them maybe one really gentle one and tell them, mm -hmm. hey, we noticed you haven't been opening our emails. What's going on? Would you like fewer emails? Would you prefer updates over another channel? Mm -hmm. Would you prefer, you know, is there something specifically that you are or are not interested in? And help them make it easy for them to interact with you in the way they want to. So sometimes that really means a softer touch. Sometimes churn happens because we're coming on a little strong. It doesn't mean we should be afraid to come on strong. It again, just comes back to listening. Yes. You have to identify those moments and identify what the problem is and what and what it is. So there are some people that they might churn off your subscriber list, you know, if they keep getting it in the same amount because maybe their life is really busy now and they're just not reading them anymore. Whereas if you said to them, hey, we can send you one email once a month with everything you need to know, would you prefer that? Bam, you kept a client, you know? Exactly it. Yeah, frequency, so important. Yeah, that that's kind of that's you have to be you have to be very channel agnostic in this approach, right? You have to look at it as like this is it's not about the email, it's not just about social, it's about just listening to the customer at where they want to be found and where they want to be communicated to. Exactly. That's exactly it. I mean, we're all the same. Well, I, I'm less of a phone call guy. I'm more of a email guy. Some people yeah, are more of a text person than a phone call. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so you never know, right? Everyone's got their own kind of preference. So this is kind of churn prevention is so important. 